Okay, so I am a professional voice talent who watches a lot of YouTube videos, and um, I think there's this giant problem on YouTube that no one wants to talk about, and that is content creators and their inability to connect with their audience via their voiceovers. So uh, let me rewind this a little bit. Last week, I was watching the vidIQ channel, and uh, I was watching one of their review um, live streams, and they were looking at a faceless channel by a small creator who had uh, on-screen graphics and images and had a voiceover. And they were kind of arguing about whether or not the voiceover was a real person or an AI voice. And they kind of made the determination that it was an AI voice. Now, I've been doing professional voiceover work for the last full time for like seven or eight years now. And I'd like to think that I have an ear tuned for real people and fake voices, especially because I have seen how good these AI generated voices have become over the last, I don't know, year or two. And listening back, I, I clicked out of the video, I went to this channel, I listened to the video myself, and I could definitely tell that it was a real person. Except the problem is they thought it was an AI voice. And so um, in this video, I want to give you three practical tips to make sure that you are not falling into the AI voice trap with your own voiceovers and so that you can connect better with your audience. Now, disclaimer, these tips uh, are general tips. They may or may not apply to everyone out there, but they should apply to most. And uh, yeah, they're on a case by case basis, but also they are not a guide to becoming a professional voiceover talent. That is uh, not a video I can make on YouTube in five to 10 minutes. And, um, and the real secret behind that is a person's uh, acting ability. If you do not have any uh, background in acting or performance, you will only make it so far as a pro voice talent. That being said, these three tips are practical things that anyone can do to make their voiceovers a little more authentic, a little more real, and hopefully connect with your audience in a way that you intend on. So the first thing is comes in before you even start recording your audio, and that is your script writing. And I know that sounds crazy, right? How can voiceover be affected by your script writing? Well, it is because while you listen to national commercials and, and things like that, they have professional writers who are writing material to be voiced. The average everyday person has a history of grade school to, you know, high school, college, whatever your education is, of writing to be read in your head, not to be verbalized aloud. And so if you're not cognizant of writing for speaking instead of writing for reading, you often do things like sentence structures that don't sound conversational. You often use words that we would never use in an everyday conversation. Um, you often do things like you don't use contractions. And all of those things combined make it feel like you're actually reading something that was never intended to be read aloud. And as a result, it's hard to connect to your audience when when you're in that mode. A perfect example of this uh, are audiobooks today. And have you ever listened to an audiobook and you thought to yourself, wow, this book is a classic. Uh, I'm listening to it, but it doesn't it doesn't sound it's not good. You don't like it. And it's not that the narrator is bad per se or doing a, a bad job or making mistakes. It's just that some of those classic novels were written to be read in your head and not to be read out loud like a bedtime story. So if you want to connect with your audience, go back. If you're scripting, which I personally have my own, uh, yeah, my own thoughts on whether you should or should not script your videos. But if you do write a script because you need something to read off, it's okay, but go back and reread your script and think about it from your standpoint and incorporate as much uh, of your personality and your personal speech patterns as you can, as if you were talking to someone as opposed to 
writing something. Um, I can't tell you how many scripts I receive that fall into this trap that are written with 100 buzzwords and then they tell me that, hey, we want to sound friendly and conversational like you're, you're having a cup of coffee with your best friend. And I'm sorry, but uh, when I have coffee with my best friend, I never say the words introducing or innovative. But that's just me. Okay, so point number two that you can work on on your voiceovers to sound less robotic and connect with your audience more. And that is don't over enunciate. I'll tell you what, one of the classic traps that a lot of amateurs fall under, under is that they think they need to over enunciate or correctly pronounce every single word in a script while they're doing a voiceover. And um, that's not the case. We don't necessarily pronounce every T at the end of words like right or um, things of that nature, right? When a word ends in T, if it's correct, we don't typically pronounce that last T. We don't say that was correct. I would like this to be right. We kind of drop that T or make it a soft T. And when we over enunciate in a way that we are not used to, it comes off as sounding artificial. Why? Because AI voices typically pronounce everything, every word perfectly. And so when you try to emulate that by pronouncing every word perfectly, then it sounds super unnatural. Now, there are cases that where this is okay. If you, um, like, if it's part of your character, talking to Bandrew, it's okay, it's cool. If you are speaking English to an audience that may not speak English as their first language, having that clear enunciation might be super helpful. If you are a non-native English speaker and you're working on your English, yeah, that could be also helpful, right? But in general, if you want to connect with your audience, yeah, don't worry so much about making those pronunciations correctly or even pronouncing words correctly, right? We make mistakes all the time and we go back and we, and we uh, correct ourselves and that's okay because that's what makes us human and that's what separates us from artificial intelligent voices, AI voices. And the third thing that you can do right now to make your voiceover sound more conversational, to make them connect with your audience more, is to reduce your audio editing and post-processing. Now think about that for a minute, right? We are in, when you, when you create a YouTube video, uh, the trend has been to edit it really tightly, right? Like you cut out all of the ums and ahs and pauses and mistakes. And the same is true when someone is trying to record a voiceover for their YouTube video. They might record the whole thing. They might have a bunch of mistakes. They mess up all, you know, I mess up all the time and I chop those out, um, but they tighten it up and they do things like cut out breaths and breaths and breathing are the one thing that AI can't really replicate with regards to how they sound compared to how you sound. And so when you cut out all of those breaths, yeah, you start to sound like a robot who doesn't need to breathe. When you um, over-process your audio, if there is too much compression, if there is too much si if the si if the space between your words is dead silent, that feels unnatural because there is this there is this um, sound of the room sound that you're in that isn't it completely silent. And so when you do hear silence in between words, in between sentences, that can be jarring. And it feels like that is an AI voice. And so think about not doing things like declicking your audio or noise reduction or over compression or boosting the EQ too much because all of those things that artificially manipulate the sound of your voice, while you might think it sound your voice sounds better, because let's face it, when we start recording ourselves and we listen back to it, none of us are, are completely thrilled with the way we sound. We always think, oh, I could sound better if I was a little more, if there was a little more bass or if I wasn't so sibilant or if my mouth didn't produce that clicking noise every time I say a certain word. But the truth is, people that watch your videos, they uh, 
they're hearing you exactly how everyone else in the world hears you. That no one goes around with this artificial EQ in their voice when they talk to people, right? And so while you're used to hearing your voice differently because you actually hear it through your head, not just solely through your ears, uh, other people are totally fine with the way you sound right now. So you don't need to go through and over process your voice, especially if it's for your personal YouTube channel, right? Because that's your sound. That's how you sound. You're not getting, um, no one's telling you to sound differently. And so being yourself, letting your authentic voice come out, not over processing it, leaving in the breaths, leaving in the mouth noises, leaving in um, things like that, the room, the room tone, that separates you from an AI voice. And that's really what we're trying to do here, right? When we are looking to connect with people with solely our voice, we don't want to come off as robotic. And there is a natural rhythm to how you speak. There is a natural pacing. And when we over edit, chop it all up, spit it out really quickly, that's when people question whether or not you are using your own voice or you are using an AI generated voice. And I'll tell you what, in today's day and age of YouTube being flooded with these automation channels, um, I don't know about you, but anytime I hear an artificial voice, an AI voice, I pretty much immediately click off. Um, and I don't want to click off real people doing their own voiceovers because it is a talent, it's a skill, it's something you have to develop over time, it's something that you most likely will not be good at on your first video or your 10th video or maybe even your 20th or 50th video. It could take you a little bit of time. It took me probably four years of doing it full time before I felt comfortable enough to, um, yeah, to consider myself actually knowing what I was doing, right? And so the same is for, the same thing falls for content creators who voice over their own uh, projects. I will leave you with a really great note though, because it's your YouTube channel, because you are doing it for yourself, you don't have to worry about making mistakes. You don't have to worry about staying on script. You don't have to worry about being, you know, having it sound perfect because it's you and your sta all of our standards are different, but the second someone starts to pay you to do voiceover work and it has to reach a certain quality level with regards to recording sound and your performance, yeah, that changes that changes the whole game. But when it's you and it's your YouTube channel and it's your videos and it's your content, yeah, you can do it how you like. And if these rules apply, then that if they don't apply to you, then that's great because it means that you're doing your own thing. But if you are struggling with connecting with your audience, consider these three things, look at your own videos, listen to them, ask someone else to listen to them because sometimes a third person hearing something makes all the difference when it, when it comes to um, being analytical about what you're hearing versus what they're hearing. So hopefully these tips have helped you in some way. Um, I, if you have any questions about these tips or voiceover in general, you can leave them down in the comments below. I try to get to as many as I can, but sometimes I don't have the ability. You can also email me if you have some specific question that you need answer that you don't feel comfortable leaving down in the comments. And, uh, and we'll talk again real soon.